Hey, good morning once again. Uh, thanks for joining in. Uh, let's get started. Uh, from where we left off in the last class, we stopped at page 43 from chapter 4. Learning started learning about uh, worship ministry and the organizational aspect of it. So let's uh, resume from where we left off. We spoke a little bit about rehearsal and the difference between practice and rehearsal. Um, and so let's go, actually, let's go down to page 45. We'll resume from there. Page 45, where it starts off talking about uh, the importance of being skillful in everything that we are doing, um, right? Uh, skill has actually been defined as the ability to do something well. Uh, that's what skill is, uh, right? Uh, there's this theory about uh, 10,000 hours. Um, it's, uh, I forget who the person is who wrote uh, this book called Outliers. Um, oh man, if anybody remembers the author's name, please share it. <laughs> uh, he wrote a book called Outliers. And one of the things what he says in the book is that um, if you want to be really, really good at what you do, uh, the person would have required to practice for at least 10,000 hours. Um, so if a pianist, a person who is aspiring to be become a concert pianist, no, not everybody who plays a keyboard can be, be a concert pianist. Uh, there is uh, a huge expectation of skill that is required from a person who claims to be a concert pianist. And, um, and so what, they, they can come to that place only when they've attained or put in at least 10,000 hours of practice. Uh, so you can do the math of uh, how long and or how many years it takes uh, to complete 10,000 hours of practice uh, to be skilled at something. But you know, but <laughs> that is just an example to share, uh, to say that uh, to do something skillfully is to have the ability to do something well, like really well. And we see that in the Bible as an example as well. So when Moses received the blueprint from God, he didn't, he, you know, he just, he didn't hand over the blueprint to anybody to, okay, all right, it's your responsibility now to go and build the tabernacle. Uh, or even David, for that matter, you know, when he put together Levites, uh, he gave in charge, uh, he put a person called Kenaniah in charge of the singers because Kenaniah was skilled at what he did, uh, right? And so Moses gave uh, the blueprint to the, the craftsmen who were skilled at what they did. Uh, and so skill is huge. It, it, it's, it's beautiful to grow in skill. And it is, uh, it is our, this, uh, you know, the, our, our skill uh, or the gift that God gives us. And as you continue to working on it, uh, you know, God will, take you to places that you would not have imagined. Uh, for example, there is a huge difference between just a talent and skill. Uh, you know, so just because you were born with some sort of a talent, you could, you could okay, grasp something easily. And if that is not worked upon, uh, that is an app, talent is an absolute waste. So you, uh, you know, you put in your effort, you practice, uh, and you work on the talent, on the gift that God has given to you, and you build on it, right? And so it was David's talent uh, and skill. You know, David says he was skillful in what he did, and he was just—he was not just skillful in playing an instrument. He was skillful in everything that he did. As a shepherd, he was skilled. Uh, he was a very good shepherd, and as a and as a king, he was skilled, right? Um, and uh, and so, when Saul was troubled, right? When that when that when the troubled spirit, an evil spirit, troubled him, what they said is, bring uh, someone who can play the harp and who's skillful at it. And so, who did they bring? And they ended up bringing David, right, uh, to the king's court. And so, your skill can put you in the presence uh, of the people that you would not have imagined because uh, it's more than where you will be the importance is your skill is not for yourself 
or your gift or your talent is not just for yourself or for you to build your own fame it's like oh look i'm good at this oh look i'm good at that your skill in the kingdom is always to be a blessing to another it, it, that's always been the kingdom principle is god if god has blessed you with something is for you to be a blessing uh, to someone else and if you are skilled at something uh, it's really about can you be a blessing to someone else that's the bottom line right so a uh, very three simple things to remember when it comes to skill is skill is a gift from god for his glory okay skill is a gift from god for his glory not your own glory not our own glory not for the glory of your own ministry etc it's for the skill of his glory right uh, skill must be developed very important right skill must be developed um a little bit of out of context is uh, there is a clip on uh, if you know harsha bogle uh, one of the famous cricket commentators uh, harsha bogle he talks about um sachin tendulkar sachin is one of the famous uh, cricketers from in india and his classmate called vinod kambli and so they both entered the you know started playing for india uh, started playing from school and india at a very young age and he talks about how sachin worked on his weakness on his skill while the other person did not uh, it's it's a wonderful video that is just an example and i can give you example after example in whom i there is incredible potential in an individual incredible potential in the in the in individual and sometimes as leaders um you know you will you will have the privilege of seeing uh, or having a bird's eye view of a person's life that you are leading uh it, it's a it's an incredible honor that uh, we as leaders sometimes get is that okay you just stand back and you see okay this person has an immense calling from god the potential is is incredible sky is the limit but what is more disappointing is that then the person still don't realize it and don't do anything about uh, working on it or you know absolutely wastes their life uh, etc so uh, without working on their skill so skill must be developed uh, ask yourself this question are you good at something are you skilled uh, at doing something can you get better right ask yourself that question uh, and if you are not working on your skill if you are not investing in your skill to develop yourself uh yeah it, it's just wasting um you know beautiful gift that god's given you okay and, and the third point there says skill doesn't make worship more acceptable before god <laughs> okay skill doesn't make worship more acceptable before god um right see the only difference that uh, the only thing that causes the difference or makes the difference between uh worship music so to say or christian music or gospel music versus the um secular the music of the world is the spirit of god because you know doesn't matter if hill song is playing c major or if iron maiden or metallica or black sabbath is playing c major the note still remains the same what are the notes for c major or c major chord is c e n g okay so christian musicians will play the same three notes the secular musicians will play the same three notes uh, but the only thing that will change and impact a life uh, or you know someone's spirit is the spirit of god over your music and so it's very important that we you know we combine biblical truth with music and that is skill we combine biblical truth with our music and we lay it before him and ask him you come and breathe over over what i am playing um right and so music is powerful there's no question about it but what transforms life more than just impact is the spirit of god over your music um and it that's what was uh, happening when david was playing the harp in the presence of king saul okay uh, skill is important uh, but the 
why I'm stressing on this point is most of us use that as a license to not be to not develop or, or work on our skill. We say, uh, you know, oh, it's about the heart, brother. It's about the heart, pastor. It's only about the heart. It's about what's on the inside uh, that matters the most. Uh, that's one hundred percent true. But that is not the license for you to not work on your skill. Okay. <laughs> All right. The commandment, the command in the Bible is that let us come skillfully before Him. Anything that we do, let it be done skillfully because He is worth it. He deserves it. Let it be done beautifully, skillfully. Okay. And so, what are some of the uh, you know? Uh, traits of a uh, skillful or the some of the skills of a worship leader um, if you're leading worship or and now I'm not just talking about the person who's leading in worship in my opinion uh, from and I've been in worship ministry for a while now at least uh, two decades and uh, every person on the team is a worship leader regardless of what instrument you play drums or keyboard or backup vocalists bass guitar acoustic guitar it doesn't really matter uh, you are a co-worship leader with the worship leader who's leading the congregation every one of them is a co-worship leader right and so uh, worship leading is an art and that it takes musical intuition and honed natural gift to lead well so what are some of those things expected from a good worship leader or a skillful worship leader is one effective musical skill uh, organization and preparation experience practice leadership ability relational ability calling character intuition natural gifting god's grace okay um so again if you're a worship leader and you're applying for a job in a church uh, you know, just like any other resume, you see, okay, what are your strengths? Uh, you know, this is a section for that, isn't it? Isn't it? Well, I'm good at Microsoft Office, I'm a team player, I'm on time, I'm punctual, etc., etc. Uh, and in addition to all of that, uh, this is very important, right? This will be noticed. Um, okay, are, are, you, are you skillful in music? Can you play at least one instrument and lead? Um, do you believe in organization and preparation or do you just believe blindly in just going spontaneous all the time let's improvise uh, being organized uh, prepared experience uh, practice do you practice a uh, leadership ability are you able to lead um, well right relational ability uh, this is very important the relational ability is uh, as worship leaders as worship team members you see there's the stage or the platform and then there's the congregation right and i've always said this for the congregation they see they always see uh, th like there's an invisible line between the stage uh, and them the invisible line and it is the responsibility of the worship team to erase that invisible line and to make them feel welcomed and that they are as one Okay, that, that they shouldn't be intimidated. Okay, people on stage are, you know, extra holy and we are just here. I'm not going to, you know, uh, distance ourselves from them. But being able to relate with the congregation, it's not just during the 30 minutes of worship or 40 minutes of worship. Uh, after the service or before the service, are you down there? Are you welcoming, uh, you know, people? Are you saying hi to them? Are you, you know, are you being warm uh, and welcoming to the people who are coming to the church? And after the service is done, are you st are you do you scoot home immediately, or do you stay back to you know get uh, you know just again say hi to people around? So all of that is the relational ability that helps the congregation connect with you, so that they know the person who is leading on stage, that you are not alien to them. It's like, okay, so they only see you on stage for the 40 minutes after that nobody knows where you are and so there is no connection with the individual at all so uh, it is so you see that worship leading or being part of a worship team itself is not only about being able to sing well or play the instrument well there is so many other qualities that are expected that are required of a worship team member all right, and all of this for you as a leader or a ministry leader is very important for you to notice all this. Or uh, if there is a person that you think can be, 
you know, uh, shaped, you teach them, you invest into all of this, right? As a senior pastor or, or a ministry leader, you tell them, hey, you know, I've noticed that you, you, you know, you lead worship well, you incredible character and whatnot, but what you can work on is your relational ability uh, with the congregation. Uh, I noticed that you're, you know, that you uh, go back home immediately. Uh, it's okay if there's a genuine reason, that's absolutely fine. So, but, you know, I would encourage you to stay back, just hang around, say hi to people, um, let them get to know you uh, as well. So all of that, uh, you know, has to be thought, inculcated, etc. Okay. Um, and still, what are the character traits of an effective worship leader? And again, as uh, the ministry leader, you, uh, if you are the ministry leader or the senior pastor, if you're hiring a worship leader uh, you know, or selecting a worship leader to your worship team, um, here are some of the questions that you can ask uh, yourself. Right? Uh, are they humble? Do they have a vibrant secret life with God? Are they able to take direction or correction? Mm, that's very important. Are they able to take direction or correction? Um, let me just pause there for a minute and say that musicians are very sensitive people on earth. It's just, it's just, it's just so extremely sensitive. Uh, you know, they come under the categories of artists, right? Artists in general are very sensitive, you know, be it from a chef to a, an artist who paints, uh, you know, they take ex extra pride in, in the work that they do, right? A, a chef would want everybody to like his or her food that he makes. You know, I do use this ingredient, this exotic ingredient. You know, I only use organic uh, from the farm to the table. It's just amazing. You see all the different tastes. You know, there's some sense of pride in it. Right? And you just tell him, it's like, you know, I think this could have been done better. It's like, what do you mean? I've been doing this for 20 years. I know better than you. So, you know, so they can take offense very easily. And even uh, go to an artist who paints, um, say, I think a different color would have been nice. Uh, like, oh, please, like you understand color. I understand color. I've been painting for a while. Uh, what have you done with your life? Yes. You know, so uh, a question. The statements like that can come uh, when the offense is taken. And same thing with the musicians. Uh, you know, it, when, when there are certain guidelines, for example, that a musician on a worship team member can play on a Sunday only if they've attended the rehearsal on a Saturday or a Friday, right? If they don't attend the rehearsal on a Saturday, they are not allowed to play on a Sunday. But they will come because they will feel entitled, certain people. I've been serving in this church every Sunday for the last 15 years. How can you say this to me? Why should? What is the need for me to come for a rehearsal? I won't, I'm a good musician. I'm very skilled at what I do. Why should I have to come for that? There are so many things wrong with that, right? From pride to entitlement to being sensitive and whatnot, right? So all of that, and, and especially very important to note there is, are they able to take correction? If they are not able to take correction, um, it's a huge red flag. Don't even waste another second thinking about recruiting this person on your team. Just say bye-bye to them, let them go. They will be peaceful, you will also be at peace. <laughs> I hope you got what I said. So, uh, Are the accolades and affirmations of people too important to them? Another red flag to notice. Are they doing what they do to serve or to gain respect? Are they good husbands or wives, parents and family members? Are they willing to train others to take over for them? Are they willing to train others or are they just too selfish? It's like, why should I train? Why should I do this? Why should I waste my time in you know investing into other people? Are they skilled at what they do? Are they teachable and eager to learn? Are they willing to quietly care for the poor as much as they are willing to stand on a stage? Uh, are they loving, gentle, and generous with all those around them? Uh, do they uh, have a substantial interior life with God that reflects in itself in their outward lifestyle? Um, the beautiful set of questions that you can ask uh, you know, yourself uh, before you could uh, rec recruit a worship leader onto the team. Um, I think it's very important. Uh, you know, one of the 
questions that I liked in this, the third one from the bottom is, are they willing to quietly care for the poor? Um, I heard one of the worship leaders, uh, Darlene Czech, um, in one of the very old album projects from 2008, she mentioned that we can't call ourselves worshippers if we are not moved in the area of justice. Right? We can't call ourselves worshippers if we are not moved in the area of justice. If you are not moved to help the poor or the or uh, the less fortunate in your society, if uh, you uh, as a leader or as a church um, is not moved or challenged by that or bothered by that, we can't really call ourselves worshippers. So, yeah. Um, all of those matters besides music uh, and leading worship, being able to sing well and all. Okay, let's move on. <clears throat> so from then on, the role of the singers, uh, the main function of the singers is to stand before the congregation as a visual inspiration to worship. Uh, they need to be worshippers first before with a vocal ability and able to radiate worship. Um, as I mentioned just a minute ago, that there is a it, congregation see that there's an invisible line between the stage and them, right? Uh, but one of the things that will erase that invisible line uh, is this thing called freedom. Okay, and it's it's like a river. A, a river or the water can only flow down, right? The water will never flow upstream, like, you know, go up it will always flow down and it is our freedom of expression of worship when it flows down from the stage that erases that line and sets people free and encourages them to worship to come in and join in in worship and if we as worship team members are not and we if we don't believe what we are singing uh, for example Let's take this chorus. Uh, to a God we lift up one voice. To a God we lift up one song. To a God we lift up one voice. Uh, you know, it could just be a bunch of lyrics put together. To our God we lift up one voice. You know, you, you can sing it like that, or or we can come in agreement with those words and say, to our God, let's lift up one voice. You know, uh, when you when you agree, when you come in agreement with what you are singing, that that river of freedom begins to flow from you and then you know and congregation will begin to sense that and and they will know that you are not just putting on a show you know um you're not just faking uh you know experience or you know but they will they will be able to tell the difference between authentic worship and a worship that is not authentic it's as simple as that okay um so it's very important that and this goes to everyone on the team uh, it's not just the role of the singers but it's the role of them every musician is that they become one with the song that they are singing one with the music that they are playing and when they release it from that place of authority that freedom the river of freedom uh, you know begins to flow and set and set the captives free okay Let's move on. So remember, we are talking about the organizational aspect of worship ministry, from the worship leader to worship team members. And, and one of the process of how we recruit the worship team members at APC is that we have auditions. Uh, we hold auditions. Uh, it, we have three auditions um, in a year. Um, so why hold auditions? Why don't we just put up a signboard and say, okay, anyone who wants to join the worship team, please come and join the worship team. Uh, we don't do that with uh, other area of ministries, say, for example, the ushering team. Uh, you know, we don't ask them if, you, if they've completed their degree in hospitality management uh, or hotel management, only then you can join the ushering team. Not really. If you know, if you're an extrovert, if, even if you're not, if you like people, if you like to greet them, yeah, join the team, you're welcome. But worship ministry is uh, different. Worship ministry is different. We uh, we cannot and we should not just put up a sign and say, anybody who wants to join the worship team, please come join. It's very dangerous because uh, it requires skill. If a person is not able to sing in pitch, if a person who is leading worship is not able to hold the pitch or tell the difference, if they are tone deaf, 
uh, and people there are a lot of people who are tone deaf and that's absolutely fine because they will be good at something else right it's so it's it's fine it's it's a gift if uh, people who if they're able to tell the difference between a major and a minor chord or just sing and pitch it's a gift and that they need to work on and so if i have a person on my team who cannot sing in pitch they are not going to be able to lead well because they are going to be a distraction to everyone even if the congregation members do not know music theory or not know everything about music they can still tell that this person is not singing in pitch or in time and so is that helping the congregation or uh, not helping it isn't helping isn't it right it's um it's it's just creating more confusion and chaos and nobody would want to follow the person who who's not able to sing in pitch or sing in time and um me and my mom always have a fight during prayer time is one is she can sing in pitch but she cannot sing in time and so and i'm like ma please sing in time you know just one two three four <laughs> you know so um it's good fun but uh yeah so why why hold auditions is auditions give of uh, it's it's not to uh, present it like okay this is the x factor you know if you've seen that uh, a show x factor or the voice or um, american idol or indian idol you know whatever uh, okay well, let's see how you sing well and i'm going to you know pass you you know um, it's not that, but the auditions is to give a fair opportunity to everyone. If a person has uh, been singing for years, for a decade, or if a person is singing for a month or two, it doesn't matter. It's the same platform for ev that everybody will be. Um, uh, what do I say? I'm, I'm trying to get a different word for judged. <laughs> yeah, you get the point. Okay. So the parameters will not change for for different individuals. It's to give a fair opportunity to anyone who wants to join the worship team uh, based on parameters like are they able to sing in pitch? Are they able to sing in time? Do they know harmony? Uh, what is their knowledge of the song uh, that was sent? Okay. So let's just look at some of the points here. Why hold auditions? Have a focus point for people to connect with worship ministry. It's like one of the touch points, right? In, in in the corporate world, uh, or especially in the digital world, there is a thing called the touch points. Okay, for in between a company and the customers. Okay, what are the different touch points that the customers have? Do the customers have to get in touch with us, right? Um, when they purchase our item, uh, do we send them a message of thank you, saying we are we glad you came and you know dined with us? That's one of the touch points, right? And uh, do you provide them with an additional toll-free number so that they can reach out to you for future reference? That is another touch point. Okay, so like that, uh, one of the touch points uh, for people of the congregation to worship ministry, I'm saying one of the touch points, uh, and not the only one, is the auditions. Right? When we play an announcement saying, okay, we're going to have worship auditions. Okay, who do I get in touch with? You, you give the email ID and the phone number, and now, the, congregation has a point of reference right so that's why uh, we hold auditions we also want to grow the team um, right we don't want to be uh, you know the same size as we've been for the last 10 years we want to grow so that's why we hold auditions uh, to increase the level of musical presentation of your music to provide a consistent common and helpful method for growing worship ministry personnel to give away and expand ministry. Okay, uh, very quickly, uh, I want to share the worship, uh, the audition process at APC. Is so at least a month in advance. So what is the date today? Is October third. Um, so we, if the auditions on November fifth, that's a month away, we will start announcing it from this Sunday, October eighth. Let's say. Um, so saying that, okay you know, audition uh, to register for auditions, go to apcwo.org slash auditions. Uh, and there they can go and fill a form and we'll get the names. As soon as we get the names of those who have registered for auditions, we will email them 
a list of songs that they have to come prepared on the day of auditions. So if you're uh, auditioning for an, uh, for electric guitars, uh, you'll be sent two, three songs that you need to work on, prepare well, and come for the auditions. Same thing for every other musician. OK, and so on the day of auditions, uh, you know, we, we have the auditions, and um, they play the song, and they are uh, marked on the certain parameters, like I just mentioned, which, uh, like say, uh, the song detailing, the knowledge of the song, have they practiced well? Do they have good dynamics? Uh, are they able to sing in pitch, uh, sing in time, uh, et cetera, et cetera, all of that. OK, and so once the next process uh, of the, the next step of auditions is once they've cleared the auditions and they have selected, uh, we ha then have the orientation process. So the orientation process is uh, they need to attend the orientation meeting one. They need to attend at least a five practice sessions of the current worship team. Uh, they, you know, they have to go and observe. Uh, and see, okay, how they are practicing uh, the different songs, how do they approach uh, learning different songs, new songs. Uh, and then they need to attend at least two sound uh, and set up uh, meetings. They'll have to come in very early in the morning, uh, attend them. So once they have successfully finished the orientation process, they will be started uh, rostering uh, in the team. So you see, it's, it, it's a, it's quite a process, right? It's, uh, you know, f just putting up a signboard saying, uh, come and join the worship team, ver that versus the process, you know, like what I just mentioned. So, um, right, so, uh, okay, there's a question from uh, Rosalind. Can Pastor Ashes sing well or understand notes and pitch and chords? Out of curiosity, I wanted to know. Uh, I have actually haven't uh, listened or uh, heard him sing, uh, Rosalind. Uh, I mean, so because I've only heard him preach and teach, so <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I so I I don't I don't know about that. And he's actually mentioned that he used to lead worship when he started prayer meetings in Manipal as a student, and uh, so yeah. But he's got a good knowledge of songs because every time, you know, there has been times when, you know, we are leading in worship towards the end of ministry time or, you know, he will come and suggest songs. It's like, uh, can we do this song? Can we do that song? Um, so, yeah, uh, I would say that he's got a good grasp of, it, of things. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Um, so, again, just once again to say that the, the, uh, I absolutely love the orient, uh, the audition process at APC. It's not, I'm not saying that because I'm the worship pastor, uh, but uh, it's this this has been the process from the time I joined APC in 2012, and I joined the APC worship team in 2014. Um, you know, the audition process has been the same, the orientation process has been the same, and I didn't see any need to change it because the after they've ex after they've successfully completed the auditions, selected for auditions. This orientation process is a beautiful filtration, a filtering process. That's where their character is tested. Um, you know, everything about the person is tested in this process. Because some of them, you might have people coming and saying, why should I go through this orientation process? Uh, I've been playing an instrument for 15 years. I know what I'm doing. I'm not going to sit through this orientation process. I want to immediately join the team. I was like, I'm sorry. It doesn't happen like that. This is a system in place. You like it. You be in it. Otherwise, nobody's compelling you uh, or holding you back. Please feel free to leave. Right. Um, so it's a fair opportunity for someone who's uh, just been playing an instrument for a year or less, or for those who've been playing an instrument for a decade. It doesn't matter. It's the same process that everybody will have to go through if they want to be part of the worship team at APC. Um, no excuses. Okay. So. That's about auditions. And uh, once the auditions is done, you'll see at the bottom of page 47 and uh, 48, going into 48, they'll begin to be rostered in the worship team. Now you'll see um, a message that will usually, usually go out, right? a worship team roster message. So that's an example of what I've pasted there. Um, 
so what happens is on the 15th or the 17th of every month i send out a message kind of similar to this saying uh, for example this message was sent uh, must have sent somewhere in the month of november i'm sure it was 17th or 16th um, asking them for the their availability for the month of december okay so and in that message i will mention all the sundays that are there with the dates and then extra services in that month so um is some some months like the month of october has five sundays so long month okay <laughs> It, so you have four Sundays plus two combined services. That's one is Christmas service and the New Year service. We need a lot of people. Um, and so we send out that message and people will start responding uh, either to me or we have worship coordinators for each location. APC in Bangalore has five locations. Central, which is in MG Road. Um, and then you have the North, South, East and the West. And so uh, each worship team coordinator of that location will get the dates uh, of people from that location and give it to me and I will eventually put the roster together uh, I'm, I'm I'm not sure if I've shared an image of the roster before but uh, let's just for our sake I'll show you how the what the roster looks like this is not new for John Paul <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, <laughs> I'm sure John misses the sight of this roster. So, no, I'm making 16 every month. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, it, okay, uh, let me just put it out there making the roster is not fun. Okay, it's, uh, it takes me solid one week to put the roster together to balance everything okay i'll take you through the roster so here's it is um because we don't have a place of our own we hire different studios uh to meet for practice so and this sheet contains all the the list of different studios uh and um and then the second sheet will have uh will have the sundays again um <clears throat> yeah and all the sermon topics uh, just to help the worship team members know okay what's the sermon for that sunday and they can prepare accordingly okay it's the sermon plan and then one sheet will contain only worship leaders for different sunday for different locations as you can see central south north east west okay um, so last Sunday is done, um, and um, so Oct Sunday, 8th October, you see Josh is leading worship. I am at South next Sunday, Moses at North, Nirmal at East, Melvin at West, um, and so on and so forth. So once this is sorted, now I will put them, let's say, for example, go to the central team here. Once the worship leaders are set, now I have to put the band together. Right. I uh, yeah. So who's playing keyboards? Who's playing acoustic guitar? Is there electric guitar one? Most of the times, there's no electric second electric guitarist. Who's playing the bass? Who's playing the drums? Backup vocalist. Um, yeah. And MD simply means music director. So that's that's not necessary. Okay. So this is what uh, uh, this is the system that we follow at APC um, for now. Okay, and this is the organizational part of it. So, you know, as I mentioned, <laughs> worship ministry is not only about singing on stage and all the lights and all this beautiful thing and all of that. There's a lot of organizational part. There's not a lot of uh, parts that are not fun, I should say. <laughs> uh, but it's still, it, you know, everything is learning process. Everything is, um, you know, yeah. Okay, so Jeffina, you've asked a question. I have seen some churches paying salary to every member in the worship team, and in some churches, worship team members are volunteers. What about APC? And is it necessary to pay the worship team members? Uh, it depends, uh, I mean, from church to church, at least in, I can't speak for the West, but in India, it's uh, from what I've seen, most churches is, it's, it's, about, it's about volunteering. 
And at APC also, it's about volunteer. And so those who want to volunteer serving in the worship team, they're welcome to. Unless they are part of the staff, um, yeah, we don't pay the worship team members. But we take good care of them. Yeah. OK, uh, are you guys with me? Any other questions? Any thoughts that you want to add? I hope you all are okay because uh, you know this is all practical things, and I hope uh, you know. And all of these points are not to say that this is what you need to do in your church or in your ministry. Uh, all of these pointers are here to help you have uh, you can to come up with your own system that will suit your church's uh, you know ecosystem. Uh, yeah. But it's very important to have a structure, a plan, an administrative department, a good administrative system uh, that will, um, you know, help the the ministry function well. Okay. Uh, any questions? All right. If there are no other questions, we'll pause here. We'll uh, take a break and we'll come back and resume. All right, thank you.